Hey everybody, Dave here. I've got another exciting video for you and uh, good news. Hopefully I sound much better than I did in my last video. My uh, complete system here com just took a dump. <laughs> so I had to scramble through using the headset and the audio at the end was really bad. But hopefully um, everything's back to uh, better quality or higher quality. So anyway, with that said, what I want to do is talk to you today about collections, edit grid, and subgrid. And the reason for this is, well, let me go back and start over a little bit more. So I usually create, as you guys know, a repository out here in my uh, repo on GitHub. And so what happens is, is I want to keep creating or keep creating all of these different repos and it's starting to get a little bit out of control. So what I've done now is I've created a repo called YouTube videos. And I'll be labeling the thumbnail with video one video you know whatever the name of what it is and then you guys just come up here to the youtube videos go into the folder and then i will have any corresponding files as it relates to the video that way you guys will not only learn what it is that i'm trying to show you visually you'll actually have some of the code used in the video so that you can go ahead and try to learn. So as of right now, everything is cool and free. I don't have any plans anytime soon to uh, charge any money for this content. It is 100% free. That being said, you know, I don't want to say it's going to be free forever because, you know, things do change if I were to become unemployed and maybe I wanted to do this full time, I might consider charging for it, uh, you know, at that particular point in time. But as of right now, Life's good, no plans in the future for, for doing this anytime soon. So till further notice, everything is free and in the YouTube's video collection on my GitHub will be all of the corresponding videos that you'll see in these online video courses here. All right, so let's uh, play this video so that I can show you what this thing does. So what we're talking about here is I have a single collection in memory. Now, the technique and the tricks that I'm going to show you in this video can be used in any uh, scenario where you're using a data source. So SharePoint, it could be Dataverse, SQL Server, whatever. Okay, it gets, you can also use this um, with a API. And so there's different techniques that uh, you know, you'll know, you have to employ there, obviously, creating maybe a custom connector and things of that nature. Um, and I did a video, I think, a day or two ago about that alone. So let's look at what this behavior is. So first, on the left side, we have a collection that is 100% empty. On the right, we have a table showing us the data in read-only mode of what's in the collection. So here is a uh, collection that I've added a single row to, and immediately it adds a blank empty row, it assigns an ID, and it puts the uh, collection in what I'm calling grid edit mode. And that means that I can go ahead and uh, create edits. But maybe I want to create three records, right? So I hit this add button a total of three times. And as long as I'm in grid edit mode, I have the available uh, options to go into any of the fields and I can go ahead and edit them. I also have the opportunity to delete items. I could also toggle this off and grid edit mode goes away as well as the ability to delete. Okay, so some of the things I could do to button this up is, you know, depending on whether or not this thing is toggled, uh, I could, you know, shrink or re -shrink, shrink or grow the grid accordingly to allow for that because this looks visually kind of sloppy. So, you know, I'm a stickler for these types of things. So maybe I'll fix that um, and then repost the content so that it does that. That way you'll get to see some of the tricks on that as well. So the... Uh, the technique that I used here was I'm simply just creating a collection, but the interesting thing is, is I'm using this auto ID. So if I keep adding uh, items, you notice that the grid goes back into grid edit mode. And if I were to hit save, it saves all the items and takes it out of grid edit mode. Now, one thing you didn't see, let me toggle grid edit mode back on. And um, we'll just call this user name some value, you know, whatever, and we'll just hit save. So you see that it does save this information off into the 
actual collection itself. And what the cool thing about it is, is that, um, you know, like I said, this could be done with any data source. There may be a use case where you might want to take this information and keep it in a collection and then on save, write it to the collection and then in a background thread so that the user's not waiting, that they can, uh, you know, do kind of a for all it loop iteration or you could simply just patch everything in one fail swoop of batch and um, that's pretty cool but the the point here is is that uh, if you use a collection as an intermediary you can give the end user the feel or the you know the feel of your app the things are happening now 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 and then what you can do is like i said process this information in a background and what will happen is with that uh, background thread, then it'll go ahead and continue to, you know, write that data on the back end. And the user's not really necessarily waiting for that uh, to, you know, to go ahead and happen. So anyway, a couple different uh, techniques and tricks to use here. And then this simply just wipes out the entire collection and lets us begin. So let's dig into this to kind of see how or, or what I did to this. So let's go ahead and edit. And this always, for some reason, takes a few minutes, but I'm recording this on a Saturday, so I'm hoping it's faster than normal. Keyword or operative word, hoping. So I got a pretty fast internet connection, and I don't know, I think uh, Power Apps is uh, getting used quite heavily these days because I don't know if it's just me but it just seems like the entire platform is slowing down ever so slowly every day. All right, so with this being said, I have a, uh, a demo screen here. I'm just gonna kind of show you out all the different components. So let's start with the application on start because I am using that. So where is my on start? So let's go ahead and look and see what we're doing. All right, so I always, as a best practice to make sure that things move quickly, I use the concurrent function religiously. And here's the determining factor for when to use it and when not to use it, because there is a science to it. When you can run multiple statements at the same time where there is no interdependency between what it is that you're running, then you can go ahead and batch it all up in a concurrent and everything happens all at one fail swoop asynchronously. Like they all kind of fire off together and they'll finish in their, in their own time. Whereas if you don't represent it or do this in concurrent, the first one will fire when it's done, then the second one will fire, then it's done, and then the third and final one will happen. So these two don't have a dependency and this is a great example. So setting a variable, no dependency there, I'm creating essentially an empty collection with the ID of zero, but then I'm doing a cleanup on where I created the first record because I want just an empty collection. And there's a dependency, like you can't remove something that doesn't exist. So I needed to make sure this finished first before executing this. So this is a great example of dependency between statements. And if you notice, this is outside of the concurrent function. So just a quick digression, this could probably be a, a mini little course in concurrency and why to use it, when to use it. So just, uh, you know, if you, as you see these in my videos going forward, just know that this is how it works. This is why I use it. And I'll refer to it time and time again, because you never know who is going to be looking on in the video at any given time. So in the collection, I have the three fields, right? I've got the ID field, the first field and the last field. Right, and so this is a gallery. If we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that gallery is listed here. And I have my icon that I did not label good. So let's do ICO delete or I, ICO remove, whatever. And this is my trash can. Okay, so the one thing, let me go back up here to um, this because I need to explain what this one does. So. When I'm creating things in an app and I need to re generically refer to them as a toggle, is the, to me, this is like a global toggle. And I could use this in scope for many different things. If, if you're not doing a lot of this, then it's okay to use one global toggle like I'm doing. But if you have a more rich application, you wanna get very specific and you wanna get toggle you know, description or V toggle description, whatever, but just, I always, anything that I know that's Boolean that I'm going to have in either an on off state, I always, 
uh, prefix it or name it toggle so that I know that I, I am going to toggle it off on and off. So it's state, I always start typically with something being off and then at a later date, I'll go ahead and toggle it back on. So here is the add button and you can see a couple of things that are going on here. So I've got two statements and the first statement is I'm patching my collection using the defaults. And then what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm assigning an ID. So if the collection is empty, there's nothing there. So what I'm trying to do, and by the way, I don't know, for whatever reason, the IntelliSense on this max function, uh, at least for me anyway, it doesn't seem to show right. And so it doesn't give you a, a whole lot of help. So you see when you're, when you're clicking into formulas and stuff, it, it kind of helps you out. And so actually I wasn't getting that earlier when I, when I did it before the recording, but now I do see that it, that it is in fact there and it is showing the parameters. So I wasn't getting this earlier. I didn't know that Max needed a source and then expression. What I was doing was, as I was doing my collection dot ID, as opposed to my collection and then adding ID as the second parameter in the max function. I was having all kinds of problems with it. And I, I use it once in a blue moon, but I don't use it religiously. But in any event, I, for whatever reason, I couldn't get the IntelliSense working or it wasn't showing up properly. Anyway, so what it's doing here is on the ID, I'm looking for an existing, uh, you know, s set of data in the column of ID and I'm getting the max value out of it. And I'm simply just adding one. That's how I'm able to add my identifier, or my key identifier. I also could have added the function instead of just doing this max ID plus one, I could have did something like GUID, right? So that would have given me, and I don't know, maybe I didn't spell it right, G-U-I-D. Why? Oh, I guess it's complaining because it's an integer and this is a GUID. So the ID doesn't match. Yep. Okay. So that's why. So I need to have a type text or special um, identifier to, to make this work like that. Come on. I don't know what it, and, and just something else that's I've been noticing too. I don't know if you guys are noticing it well, but my control Z or undo, they've seemed to have broken it inside of this. And this is a real pain in the neck because unfortunately I'm on a trackpad on a laptop. And I don't know how many times I've accidentally fell swooped everything and then boop, deleted and then everything's gone. And then I have to retype all my code again. So, um, pretty, pretty upset about that one. So we're going to do max my collection ID ID plus one. Okay, so I think we're back to where we were. All right, so in any event, this is how I'll hold the alt key down so we don't have to click play. And I'm getting one, two, three. So the nice thing about it is you see if I delete three and click add, it adds three back. Now this is fine for this particular use case, but if you're in a real world scenario, where, um, you know, maybe you're using this subgrid as a subgrid. And so this subgrid um, needs to have a very special um, ID to it. Um, you know, one of the other things too that you're gonna have to have is a reference back to the parent ID to the other table because this table might be a subgrid on a main table. Great example of that is if this were a list of contacts and its parent table was an account it's okay to have an ID for this, right? But what we need to do is to make sure that there's another uh, column, maybe PID or PID for parent ID. And so, you know, I'd have another column that references whatever this belongs to. Let's just say Acme company is ID number 113. So I would have PID of 113 and then I would have these IDs as 123. And as long as there's, these are never duplicated, um, then, then you're good. Now, if you had a subgrid with a massive amount of records, um, you're definitely going to want to use a regular database for this because, you know, collections and uh, SharePoint is definitely not going to be your friend here, especially when you're trying to do what's called a clustered index. In that case is where you want it to be a unique combination of PID and ID combined together 
to you know when the two of them work together that they would be essentially a clustered um, key or a clustered index that you could do and then of course you'd add some other stuff on there but that's a database technique or class that we don't want to get into here so in any event with that being said we've shown you how to do the IDs we've shown you how to add the stuff and you'll notice that um, the last statement on here is I'm setting the toggle to true because what happens is is I want this gallery to go into grid edit mode as soon as I add something because that's really the intent you add it you probably want to add some data and then conversely on save what I'm doing is I'm going through the gallery and I'm using all items in the gallery and then what I'm doing is that I'm patching to the collection itself which is what the gallery is based on in the first place and then what I'm saying is you know is this in context because I'm in a loop so when I say for all I know I'm iterating so I can say what what am I trying to patch what is the source record and in, in this example it, it is literally just this record and then what I'm doing is I'm just providing okay what's the column that I'm updating and then I named with good naming conventions txt first and this one is txt last because it's in a grid this repeats for each and every row or for each item in that data set or collection and so when I'm saving it out I'm simply just saying txt last txt first and I'm setting you know the text property so whatever I type in there it's actually getting saved back into it and then on the flip side I'm toggling my toggle back to its default state which is off which would take it out of grid edit mode and as a result of that the toggle gets flipped it comes out of grid edit mode and so what I'm calling or using as grid edit mode is my txt first and my txt last if we go ahead and toggle this back on and let's go to txt first and then let's go down to visibility maybe a little faster oh, it's not visibility it's display mode sorry got all spun around and so all I'm doing because toggles a boolean I don't have to do anything funky this is why I love using this technique toggle I just say if toggle because toggle in and of itself is a boolean value and it is either true or it's either in a true or a false state and so if it's true I just want to put it into edit mode if toggles false or toggle is set to false I just want it to be view only and so if I do that for each and every field in the grid I'm good and notice that for the ID column I'm just using a label see label dag nab it I'm just using label one and you can see that down here at the very bottom and so I don't need to edit that I don't want to edit it the only thing I want to do is edit these fields and then same thing for the trash can I'm removing from the collection this particular item or this row and its visibility this is why I was thinking it was on the visibility property because I knew I did something there uh, in any event same same exact logic if toggle hide it or show it so when it's in grid edit mode I can get to it and delete it and you know one of the things that's kind of cool here if we look at let's see how big is this here the width of this guy is 56 so if we go and we take this gallery and we look at the width let's see if we can do this on the fly here so it's 716 so we do if toggle and that means it's true we'll do 716 and if it's not true let's do 716 minus what did we say that trash can was trash icon ICO delete uh its width is 56 I'm trying to get back to the gallery again 56 okay so let's see what happens now we'll toggle on toggle off let's back it off to 68 yep okay so that kind of looks good so now when we toggle right just a bunch of finicky nitpicky stuff right so now we got that work in there and so as a result of this you know we've got some dynamic things going on 
The other thing that I want to show you is this bi dynamic background that I have did. Okay, so this is called template fill in a gallery. And so on the template fill, I went ahead and I did this mod function. And mod basically just says, I want you to do some division, and then I want you to only return the remainder. So if you take any whole number and you divide it by two, it's either going to be zero or one, which means it's odd or even, because you're trying to divide a number by two, and if it's even, it'll always divide evenly to zero. And if it's off, it'll always give you a remainder of one. So this little mod trick is something I've been using in traditional programming for years, and I brought it into Canvas apps and doing the same thing here. And this is great for alternating uh, the colors in the grid edit mode so that you get this banding that shows up. So that's how I was able to do it. And I'm basically just saying, you know, if it's equal to, to one, which is my odd, so my first row is always going to have this fill color. Otherwise, the second one is just, I don't specify anything. It's just transparent or white. And so that was the trick that was done there. And then the reset, I'm simply doing what I did on application on start. I'm repeating all of those same steps, just as if I hit the refresh screen in the browser. And so I'm just simply doing it to there. So that shows you what the magic was done behind the add button, the save button, the toggle button, and the reset button. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. As again, I'm trying to build the channel, so please like and subscribe. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.